Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the highly requested tinty we're off to a great start. <laughs> tinted SPF video. So in this video, I'm going to be talking through what a tinted SPF even is, why it's absolutely something that you want to make sure that you're including into your skincare routine. And then of course, talking through my tinted SPF, don't fall, collection. So we have quite a few tinted SPFs to get through. Some of my all-time favorite sunscreens. Oh my goodness, we have some beautiful ones here. So I do apply all of these SPFs to my face so that you guys can get a true idea for what that tint looks like. I saw that request a couple times in my drugstore SPF review that I posted recently. So I will put a card for that here and link it below if you haven't seen it yet. But at the time of recording that video, I had such bad skin irritation. My skin barrier on this side of my face Face was totally compromised just it looked really damaged it was super irritated so I apologize that I was not able to do that in this video thank you for being patient with me we will be doing that here today so if you guys want to hear my thoughts on all of these SPFs that I have here see them applied on my face and then of course hear why you really need to start using tinted SPF stay tuned we'll jump right into that before we do if you could please give this video a thumbs up subscribe and click on that notification bell that would help me out a lot it would mean a lot to me because I upload three to five times a week for you guys. If you want to see more of my life day to day behind the scenes, you can definitely go follow me on Instagram and TikTok because I have a lot of content over there for you. I actually just recorded a TikTok before this on potentially a new product situation that I'm going to be using to make my curls hold because my hair does not hold a curl for the life of me. So go follow me on TikTok to see how long these babies last. I mean, this volume is also crazy. Shout out Function of Beauty. I also have a review on that. Okay, gosh, every time I'm like, we're gonna make this intro short 10 years later. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's start off by explaining what a tinted F even it. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Let's start off by talking through what a tinted SPF even is and why you need to be using it. So when I say tinted SPF, I don't mean tinted in the sense of adding a lot of coverage, like a CC cream would or a foundation would. Tinted, when it comes to an SPF, just means that there's a little bit of additional color to it to help to remove that white cast. So there are a few different reasons why you may want to start using an SPF. The first is just to ensure that you're getting adequate protection from damaging UV rays. When you apply tinted SPF as a second application, that can help to fill in any spots that you may have missed with your first SPF application, whether that be an untinted or a tinted SPF. Another reason that tinted SPFs are awesome is because they can help to remove some of that white cast that untinted SPFs may have from high concentrations of zinc oxide. So if you have ever tried a 100% mineral SPF and kind of gotten that ghostly looking face where where it's just completely white, then you know what I'm talking about. If not, that can often happen with a lot of mineral SPFs due to the high amounts of zinc oxide in them. So what you can do to try to help to get rid of some of that, aside from putting makeup on top of it, is going on top of it with a tinted SPF. And the final and arguably most important reason, I mean, they're all important, I shouldn't say that, but the reason that I think a lot of people don't realize is because tinted SPFs contain an ingredient called iron oxides. And iron oxides are more effective at protecting your skin from developing hyperpigmentation slash melasma. If you're not familiar with melasma, I really want to do a video on this in the future on how my mom got rid of her melasma. She used to have really intense brown spots all around her jawline region. It's very common due to hormonal changes that happen in women and they are extremely difficult to get rid of. So of course, the best thing you can do up front is to protect yourself adequately so that you don't develop them, but a lot of the times you don't know that you're developing them until you actually see them come through on the surface. So I really, really, really want to do that video. I will show you guys before and after pictures of her. Let me know if you want to see that because I feel like that would help a lot of people. Seriously, they're gone. It's crazy. So let me kind of explain iron oxides in a little bit more depth before we move on to my SPF collection. Iron oxides are essentially coloring agents slash pigments within makeup, cosmetics, and skincare products. And sunscreens, that contain iron oxides are actually proven to be more effective at protecting our skin from melasma hyperpigmentation than the same sunscreen that does not have iron oxides. 
oxide. So does that make sense? If we have the same sunscreen, kind of if we're doing this like from a scientific method perspective, we're keeping our variables consistent. We have the same sunscreen. If all we do is add iron oxides, that sunscreen is automatically more effective at protecting us from those brown spots. Iron oxides also help to protect our skin against damaging blue light rays and the longer wavelengths of damaging UVA rays. If you're not familiar with UVA rays, those are the kinds of rays that essentially cause damage to our skin that lead to signs of aging. So if you get kind of confused between the types of UV rays, UVA stands for aging, UVB stands for burning. So UVB rays are going to give you that sunburn, which then also contributes to aging as well. And UVA rays are present year round. So even in the winter, if you feel like you're safe and you don't need to wear SPF, that is not correct. UVA rays are present in the winter. They can penetrate clouds, they can penetrate glass. So through your window, windows, we're not ever safe. So we need to wear SPF daily. And then last point I want to bring up because I feel like this is probably something that a lot of people are wondering is, okay, what if I have a foundation that has SPF in it? Does that count as my tinted SPF or as my standalone SPF? Am I totally covered and good to go if that's all I use? And the answer is no. You should never be relying on just your foundation to provide you adequate SPF coverage. In studies, it's been proven that people do not use enough SPF just from their cosmetic product alone. So it's really important to make sure that you are using a separate standalone SPF product even if your foundation does have a mineral SPF in it. So how I personally like to use tinted SPF is in combination with an untinted SPF. You don't need to do it that way. Your tinted SPF product, if it's a mineral SPF and has zinc oxide in it, can definitely be your standalone SPF, but regardless, you want to apply two applications to make sure that you're filling in any spots that you missed. So what I typically like to do is first apply one application of an untinted SPF, then I will go on top of that with my tinted SPF after that has had time to dry, of course. And the tinted SPF then can help to remove any white cast if there is one. The reason I like to do that and not use two applications of the tinted SPF is usually I'm wearing makeup and I don't want that tinted SPF to add too much color to my face. I really just wanna use it to help to remove any white cast that my untinted SPF has, and then also add the additional protection from those iron oxides. As far as how much SPF to use, it's recommended that you use about a half teaspoon for your face. I've seen anywhere from one fourth of a teaspoon to one half, but that's hard to say as a blanket recommendation because not everybody, of course, has the same size face. So that's just another reason why you're always going to be safer with two applications than just one. And then the last thing I wanted to make sure that I called out because I get this question quite often is when should I apply SPF? People are confused. Should it be before moisturizer or after? After. SPF should always be the last step in your skincare routine, regardless of if you're going in with makeup or not. Now, let's get to the fun. <laughs> this day, <laughs> Cetaphil SPF. Let's get to the fun stuff and start to talk through these so that you can see them in action and hear what they're all about. I forgot to say, quickly, there is a clear, obvious difference between my body and my face. That's because I have self-tanner on and I don't put self-tanner on my face. So if you're wondering what's going on there, yes, I'm aware. Yes, it was intentional. Okay. The first is my Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield. This is a broad spectrum SPF 50. It's a 100% mineral SPF, and the price point here is $39. I am obsessed with this SPF. If you guys keep up with me on this channel, you've heard me rave about it quite a few times, but it's a gorgeous formulation, lightweight, silky smooth and I love that it's 100% mineral. So if you're curious, this has 12% zinc oxide in it. It's fragrance free, which is a must for me. I have started to do so much research on fragrance and essential oils within skincare. Long story short, it's a no-no. So I am going to be uploading a video here in the next couple weeks on some of my favorite fragrance-free skincare products, but this is one of them. As far as the tint for this SPF, you guys can see here that it does not add any coverage to me. The tint really just removes that white cast that would exist from the zinc oxide. So I really don't get any extra color from this or pigmentation to my skin whatsoever. 
On me, I would say this drives to a natural radiant finish. None of these SPFs, at least on me, dry super completely matte, which I prefer anyway because I don't want to look like I have really, really dry matte skin. But just as an FYI, if you are somebody that likes that, you of course could go over top any of them with a powder. But yeah, this one is kind of like... It's like a demi matte, natural radiant. You know what I mean? Those are like the same things. And then I wanna highlight a couple ingredients within each SPF, of course, without reading the entire ingredient list. We do not have time for that. But just tell you guys kind of reasons why I love them. So this particular SPF has niacinamide in it. You guys probably know by now I love niacinamide. I've raved about it quite a few times here on this channel. The reason I love it is because it's super versatile and has a lot of different benefits. So it has anti-aging benefits. It helps to soothe, calm, and brighten in the skin. It helps to balance sebum production. It helps to improve texture and just a lot more. So we love niacinamide. I get so excited anytime I see that in a product. And then I'm going to look here. I have the ingredients pulled up because I'm going to struggle with these pronunciations. You guys already know. So this has phytomoist in it. I had not heard of that ingredient prior to looking through this, but it apparently is four times as hydrating as hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid helps to draw moisture to the surface of our skin helping it to appear plump and hydrated. So four times as hydrating as that. And then bisabolol, bisabolol, a soothing and conditioning ingredient. So I cannot say enough good things about this SPF. I really don't think you'll be let down if you try it. It's gorgeous. Not only is the formulation amazing, but the ingredients are awesome as well. So give it a try, you know, maybe try it out. All right, next is my Dermatology Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46. It says it has a universal tint and it's anti-aging. This SPF is $21. It's also fragrance free. And unlike the color science one, this is actually a mineral and chemical blend. So we have zinc oxide as the active mineral ingredient that's at 12%. And then we have 7.5% octinazate. If you have extremely sensitive or acne prone skin, this this may not be something that works for you because in general, chemical filters can definitely cause skin irritation. However, I have sensitive skin, I have acne prone skin, and this SPF works beautifully for me without any issues. So obviously everyone's skin is different, but I need to call that out, of course. As far as the tint, you guys can see here, it's pretty similar to Color Science in that it does not add really any additional color to my skin. It just helps to remove any potential white cast. So I would say compared to Color Science, it has a little bit more of a tint but once it's all blended in it just I mean it doesn't really make a difference this SPF definitely dries down much glowier and dewier than that color science SPF so if you have really oily skin this also may not work out for you my skin type is combination and leans more oily than dry again I am obsessed with this I have no issues with it I love a good glow to the skin and especially if I'm going to be applying foundation and powder on top of it Anything extra glowy underneath just really helps my skin come to life. You know what I mean? I don't like to look extra matte. I don't need that. And then ingredient highlights for the Dermatology SPF. This also has niacinamide in it. Love it. And that was super annoying. <laughs> Regrets. And this has sodium hyaluronate in it, which is actually the salt form of hyaluronic acid. And it's supposed to be more effective when used in skincare products than pure hyaluronic acid on its own. So amazing. That's one of the reasons it helps to make your skin look really nice and glowy. And this has knotweed extract in it, which I also had never heard of before. And that's actually supposed to help to protect our skin against damage from infrared radiation. Infrared. So that's pretty cool as well. I also love this one. I would say between the two, honestly, it's a toss up for me. I love them both, but it's just going to depend on your skin type and if you're okay with that added chemical filter, you know? Next we have the Michelle Dermaceuticals Sun Protection Sun Shield Liquid SPF 50. I have the shade Nude Light Medium here. This is a broad spectrum SPF. All of these SPFs in this video are broad spectrum, so I won't call that out for each one because I got you there. This has actually recently been repackaged, so I will insert a photo of what this looks like now. It's actually really nice because now it comes in a dropper bottle versus this little squeezy topper. That's not what you call it. The pump. My gosh. Which, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this on camera, but it shot everywhere. <laughs> 
<laughs> was trying to show it to you guys. So that's nice that they have upgraded the packaging for us. This one is $24. It's also fragrance free. And then this one is also 100% mineral. It has 16.1% zinc oxide in it. The tint for this one also does not add a lot of additional color to my skin. However, I'm looking at their site right now. So they have light medium, which I have here, and then they also have medium dark. So that's awesome. If you have a deeper skin tone, you do have that option available to you. This one says that it dries down to a matte finish. I don't know that I would say it's completely matte on me. If anything, it probably falls more into the category of demi matte, but that's what I love. I feel like anything that's completely matte just I mean, at least in my interpretation, means it's like really dry and flat looking. And this definitely does not do that to the skin. It makes my skin look healthy, but without being oily. Some ingredient callouts here. So this has safflower seed extract in it, which is a plant extract that has antioxidant properties and it's an emollient. It's really great for the skin. It also has jojoba esters, which are also emollient plant extracts and uh, taco fit. I don't think it's taco. <laughs> I'm gonna put the word right here. <laughs> More antioxidants, essentially. And this one compared to dermatology and color science is definitely the most liquidy of the three. Goes like this, least liquidy, medium, most liquidy. So it just depends again on what you prefer. I like them all, you guys, what can I say? But I mean, these two are still my top two fave. Then the last kind of higher to mid price point SPF that I have is the Clinique Pep Start Daily UV Protector SPF 50. This one retails for $19.50. It's also fragrance free and this is 100% mineral. Oh yeah, this one doesn't say it on the bottle. I had to look it up. It has 4% zinc oxide and 6.3% titanium dioxide. The tint here does not add any color to my skin, just cuts the white cast. And then this one is also very, very liquidy. So if you prefer that kind of formulation, you may really enjoy this. It feels nice on the skin. However, as far as the ingredient label, when I was looking through that, there aren't really any amazing ingredient callouts that I can make here, aside from the fact that it does have iron oxides in it. So I would say if you're looking to purchase a mid price point SPF, I would just stick to one of these three. So my shell, color science, or dermatology and just skip this one. It's not a bad SPF by any means. I do like the way that it feels on my skin. It's a really nice silky smooth finish, but if I can get iron oxides in a formulation that also has ingredients like niacinamide or some of the other ones that I called out, then I would rather do that. You know, you know. I was testing out a new hydrating product. I feel like it's making me look a little, a little oily. So sorry about that. All right. Now we are moving on to the more affordable category. So the first is this Australian gold botanical sunscreen face 50 broad spectrum SPF 50 tinted. I feel like all the words are just so jumbled up there. I'm like, I don't really know what this is exactly called, but it will be linked in my description box below. I will make sure to have, of course, all of these products listed there for you. So this SPF is $13.99, so definitely more affordable than those other ones and fragrance free. This SPF is 100% mineral, so it has 4% titanium dioxide and 4% zinc oxide in it. The finish of this one, I would say dries to a nice demi matte finish. It definitely definitely is not as glowy as some of those other SPFs that I just talked through. So compared to dermatology, it's definitely more on the matte side than that one. So as far as the tint in this one, you guys can see here, this does look like it has a fair amount of color when you first kind of squeeze it out of the tube, but as you fully rub it into the skin, it doesn't add a ton of additional coverage. And ingredient callouts for this one, this has a lot of awesome ingredients like shea butter, which is a skin replenishing ingredient. It has squalane, which is an antioxidant that helps to hydrate the skin. Skin, and it also has vitamin B5, which helps our skin to attract and retain moisture. So really beautiful option for an affordable SPF. I've been reaching for this one a lot. I've really been liking it. And I think it's just because the formulation is pretty unique. So it's definitely more of a wit, almost like moussey, if you will. I don't know if that's the right word, but you guys can see the difference between that formulation and some of the others. While it looks a lot thicker, and it is, it doesn't feel thicker heavy on the skin when you're applying or afterwards. So 
Love that. Then we have the CeraVe Hydrating Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 30 with a sheer tint, it says. This one I definitely had a couple questions on in my drugstore SPF video. I did not realize that they had come out with this a couple months prior, so I was very excited to get my hands on it. I love CeraVe, you guys. You guys know that. You know that. This SPF retails for $15.99. It's fragrance-free and it's 100% mineral. So compared to the tint in the other SPFs that we have talked through, the tint in the CeraVe SPF is definitely the most apparent and shows up the most on my skin tone. So obviously that won't be the case for everyone. I have a very fair complexion on my face not on the rest of my body, which is self-tanned. But I just wanted to call that out because it says sheer tint and on me, it's definitely not a sheer tint. I thought that that was interesting because the other SPS that I have here don't necessarily claim to be sheer, even though they are. And then this one, which does, shows up a bit darker on me. So just be aware of that. But I actually really like it because if I do have an SPF that has an intense white cast, it helps to remove that. This one, again, dries to a natural finish. I feel like I sound like a broken record record with that, but a lot of them are similar in that sense. And then ingredient callouts in this one, of course, this has three essential ceramides. All CeraVe products have that. Ceramides help to lock in moisture and also help to restore the protective skin barrier. So that actually reminds me, if you guys want to see before and after pictures of that skin barrier damage that I had and what I did, there's one product that I use from CeraVe to help to heal that because it would not go away for weeks. Let me know in the comments below. I can definitely do a quick video on that one. And then aside from the three essential ceramides, it also has niacinamide in it and hyaluronic acid. So I enjoy this one a lot. It's definitely on the thicker side as well, more comparable to this Australian gold one, but even thicker than that. So keep that in mind. I would say though, compared to their untinted SPF, it's not nearly as thick and cakey looking as that one is. So I will use this over their untinted SPF and I feel like that does help to cut that cast down and I like that combination and it's affordable so and then last but not least we have the Cetaphil redness relieving daily facial moisturizer with broad spectrum SPF 20 so this is supposed to be for redness prone skin it says the tinted formula helps to neutralize the appearance of redness this is fragrance free and this is 100% mineral so it has 10.1% titanium dioxide and 7.8% zinc oxide the tint in this Cetaphil SPF SPF, I would say is moderate. It's not as dark as the CeraVe one, but it does have a little bit more of a tint to it than maybe like the Color Science one does or the Clinique SPF. So if you want something that has a tiny bit more color to it, this will be a great option for you. This also dries to a nice natural radiant finish. And then ingredient callouts here. This one didn't have a ton, but it does have glycerin, which is an awesome skin replenishing ingredient. Glycerin is a humectant, which again helps to draw moisture to the surface of the skin. And then what I noticed in this ingredient label is that it has caffeine in it. Caffeine is an interesting ingredient because one of the benefits could be that it helps to reduce the appearance of redness on the skin. But I also was reading online that caffeine can actually irritate the skin if you have sensitive skin or acne prone skin. So definitely something to be aware of, even though it is supposed to be redness relieving, which makes it sound like it would be for sensitive skin types or those people that have certain skin conditions like eczema or psoriasis. That ingredient may actually end up aggravating the skin so just make sure to keep an eye out for that when using it but I have not had that issue yet and then the formulation of this one I really really like as well it's kind of similar to the Australian gold formulation a little bit whipped and moussier than some of those other really liquidy formulations but of course this one is only an SPF 20 so I always like to make sure that I'm using this in combination with an SPF 50 to make sure that I am getting all of the protection. Okay. Oh my gosh, please don't tip. So that is my entire tinted SPF collection. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Just me kind of breaking down some of the call outs with them and then also showing you the application on my skin. I would honestly, I recommend all of these. I mean, except for you guys know how I feel about this Clinique one. It's not like I wouldn't recommend it. I just would recommend these other ones over that. So I don't feel like you can go wrong here. It just depends on your skin type and what you're looking for in a formulation. So that's everything I have to say. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you have any of these SPFs already and what your thoughts are on them. Or do you already have some of these? Or what are your favorite tinted SPFs that I didn't talk about? Because maybe I need to do a part two.
Okay, you guys know the drill. If there's anything else you would like to see from me next on this channel, leave that in the comments below. I would love to connect with you there. I love chatting with you guys in the comments. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.